Today's Dungeons & Dragons horror story is about a player who makes a backstory for his character, only for the DM to totally remove all motivation from said character by essentially making his backstory not matter. Big thanks to Reddit user DeadRootGP for allowing me to share their story. A link to the original post is located in the description. I may be an asshole for writing this out, but I'll spare names out of respect, even if none was given to me. I like to analyze my actions for self-reflection, and maybe things could have worked out. However, this is how it happened. Am I the asshole? I'll let you, dear reader, decide. With most stories on the subreddit, it started with a request for players on R looking for game. The DM had a vague description of the game, just bare bones enough to meet the standards to make the post. A game type, a day, and a session time. I looked over the DM's page and saw that they were running the same game two times a week. The post was the same, the only difference was the day and time. I brushed it off, but I kept that in the back of my mind. I messaged them and got into the server and started to look around in the general chat log. Going way back, I could see that there had been a few players before the current set. I counted at least two other sets before us, but never found any text that would indicate a squabble or argument. Noted that as a red flag. I had chatted with the DM on his style of playing and what his experience as DM had been like. He didn't give a lot of information, but he did tell me of a problem player he had. Said her backstory conflicted with his world's lore, and she had become adversarial in response. There was a falling out and she left, but when she did all the others in the group left as well. I felt like there was something he wasn't telling me. But I didn't press. I was here for a game and made my character. I find inspiration in music. Songs are stories with emotion and themes we can learn from. In my free time, I think of how to create a character around a song. It's a fun process and suggests if you find yourself in a slump to just listen to some music for inspiration. For my character, I had chosen a song by Johnny Cash named Sam Hall. Now, this detail marks me because the character I played had the same name. Any player from that group will know what happened on their end. I will not name drop them or the DM. Hell, if they want to tell their side, I invited. Sam's backstory was simple, an abandoned child raised by kind-hearted farmers. He has eyes for the landowner's daughter. She marries a well-off man. She manipulates Sam into killing her husband so she can have it all with her new lover, who happens to be the sheriff. Sam does the deed, but gets scared in the fight, so he runs home. In the morning, when the authorities come to get him, his parents are killed for resisting. Sam gets sentenced to death by hanging, and the rope breaks. The governor conscripts Sam into the Legion to hopefully die in battle. Sam makes an oath of vengeance against the people who used him. That's where Sam meets the party. They were not in the Legion, but they found themselves in the company of the Legion in one way or another. First session was a bit lackluster. We didn't have much of a game plan when it came to the first combat, and we found ourselves a bit underprepared. It was clear that the DM had made a way to fight the horde he put us against. We had to wait it out for the mighty Legion to come and wipe them out. Why were we underprepared? We thought we were going to be fighting goblins for some quick coin. Instead, we were thrusted into a massive battle. He said it was a test to see how we played. We made it, and the team was compensated for their actions under pressure. But something about this didn't sit right with one of the players, and they left without telling anyone what was wrong. These things happened often, so I brushed it off and carried on, still under the hope that this could be something fun. That was the end of Session 1. In the time between Session 1 and 2, the DM asked for our characters' backstories. I had mine written out, keeping it simple enough that it could be applied to any world. I was under the impression that if I gave a layout of events that only made out Sam's backstory, that the DM would take some time and add some details to make it fit his world. But that's not at all what he wanted. He stated, quote, The backstory is fine, but what about the story after the backstory? End quote. I took this to mean, what did Sam want? It was obvious. Revenge. That was his motive, and every action he would take would be to get closer to that goal. This is how character-driven stories are made. Why would Sam work with a bunch of strangers? To maybe use them to get what he wants. The DM ensures me that the Empire has a way of changing fate for people. Didn't fully understand what he meant by that until Session 2. 
Session 2 rolls around, and the team makes it back from the fight. Some obvious black-cloaked stranger tells us that a noble wants to meet us because of our heroic deeds. We hold out for 15 in-game minutes, and we are heroes? That bar was pretty low, but whatever. Sam doesn't trust this guy or the noble that operates on half-assed info and poor scheduling. Sam goes off to get some gear that might prove useful if shit hits the fan. Before this session, the DM complained that he had been up all night playing Mass Effect, and more than once said, quote, If you guys don't want to play, I'll just go play Mass Effect. End quote. Once can be a joke, but three times with deadpan silence following, it's not funny. In fact, it's kind of a mood killer. After a shopping spree, the team went to meet the noble. We walk in and see this man at a small table. He's the noble, but who is this elven chick walking in from stage left? Don't know? This, ladies and gentlemen, is the character plot killer 9000. That's right, with one prolonged look at your character's face, she knows their whole life story. You don't even have to open your mouth to explain. She also comes with political power so she can fix your misfortune for you. She looks at the entire party, but focuses on Sam. It takes her a bit longer to read him because of the mask he wore. She asked him to remove it, and he said no, so she kept reading into him. No save, no warning, no asking. What's the point of this, you ask? Apparently, we were having a background check done on us for a job we didn't even sign up for. She reads Sam and then tells him that he is no longer a conscript for the Legion, and that the people who have wronged him will be put to death. The whole group is speechless. Quote, what the fuck just happened? End quote. One person managed to say out of character. Now, here's a question. If you were someone like Sam, whose life was taken from him with nothing but the flame of revenge keeping him going, and then someone just poofs that flame out and leaves you with an empty justice, would you want to keep going? You might have, but I saw this as a good time for Sam to run. So, just like Thanos without having to kill half of everything, he ran off to become a farmer. Quote, you're really just going to leave the party? End quote, the DM said. I mean, you just killed Sam's whole reason for doing anything. I guess I'll have to make another character. It's role-playing. This was the point where the DM loses another player. Quote, Role-play? This is D&D. &D. There is no RP. If you want RP, then go play Mass Effect. End quote. The fourth time was just as funny as the last. Only it wasn't. The player that dropped out at that point wasn't me. It was another who I had gotten the chance to talk to after that session was cut short. After chatting with them for a while, I had made my choice to leave the group as well. Before I did, I had a talk with the DM. I tried to give some honest feedback on where things went wrong, but that was taken as well as a fish taking a dry land. I tried explaining the importance of character backstory, even if elements of the story are never touched on in the campaign that the characters need that past for motivation. This is what I got in response. Quote, Yeah, I'm a writer. I know that. Maybe have a backstory more complicated than a Johnny Cash song next time. He cut communication after that. So, if you made it this far, was I wrong, or are we all just assholes? TLDR, DM nullified my character's backstory and expected me and others to keep going. We didn't. Now, while I understand a DM may be altering a player's backstory a little bit just to better fit the narrative and world that they're playing in, to take it all away by having an NPC come in and pulling a deus ex machina to solve all the character's problems is kind of a dick move and takes away his motivation. Also, no self-respect in DM would say that there's no RP in D&D. Dungeons & Dragons is usually mostly roleplay where characters grow and change throughout the story with a little bit of combat sprinkled throughout. It sounds like the DM just wanted to take the players on a railroad that he had written, and throw some combat in between. He did say he was a writer, so maybe he would be better off writing a book. Or playing Mass Effect. When OP asked if he was an asshole, I would say no. If you ever find yourself in a game with a DM like this, you are in no way obligated to stay and play a game that you will ultimately not enjoy. No D&D is better than bad D&D, though that's just this doge's opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But if you enjoyed this D&D horror story, then you'd probably like my other videos in this series. You can also check out my D&D homebrew series where I take a look at some funny and interesting homebrews that you might want to put into your game.
and you also could hit that subscribe button. That'd be pretty cool. Anyways, I've been the D&D Doge, you guys have been awesome, and may all of your rolls be natural 20. Till next time.